2022 is finally here and with it, there is going to be a lot of changes in finance and our business world. One of those massive changes that we're already starting to see just two weeks in is that multiple states are starting to raise their minimum wages. In fact, by January 1st, 26 states have raised their minimum wages higher than they were in 2021. Some of those states include Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and well, just about every northeastern state in the United States. Also, we have a ton of other western states, like Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, raising their minimum wages. Here is a chart I found from CNBC that basically shows you all of the states that are raising their minimum wages or have already done so in 2022. And this has sparked some massive debate throughout our country for years. Should we raise the minimum wage? And more importantly, should we raise it to around $15 an hour? Hour. Well, today that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about, so make sure to stick around till the very end of this video if you want to find out everything you need to know about raising the minimum wage in the United States. But before I break all of this down, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News, and if you like this video, then smash that thumbs up button below and hit that notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world, and we can keep making videos just like this one. So let's get into some of the numbers here. I want to discuss exactly how much these states are raising their minimum wage in 2022. For example, Going back to that chart from CNBC, you have Michigan raising their minimum wage from $9.65 per hour all the way up to $9.87 per hour. And then you also have states like Virginia who are raising their minimum wage a lot all the way up from $9.50 an hour to $11 an hour. That is a pretty big increase. But then you also have a ton of other states which are highlighted in gray here that are not raising their minimum wage at all. States like Indiana, Tennessee, and Texas. And like I said, there's only 26 states that are raising their minimum wage in 2022, and that means the rest of the country is not raising their minimum wage. So why exactly is this debate so important and coming up right now? Well, the reason being, is because of inflation and the price of just about everything increasing around the world. Over the last two years, we have seen inflation go up a lot. In fact, by January 2022, the CPI for December and for the entire year of 2021 was released, and it basically showed that inflation had rose to its highest point in over 40 years. Inflation was at 7%. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in very simple terms, let's say you have an inflation rate of around 1%. If inflation is 1%, that means if something costs you a dollar today, one year from today, it'll cost you around $1.01. That's not really a very big increase. Now, if this happens every single year, you can see how the price of things steadily goes up over time. Now, imagine if inflation is 7%. That means something that costs you a dollar today is going to cost you a dollar and seven cents tomorrow. So if you're only spending a dollar, it might not be that big of a deal. However, when you're spending hundreds of dollars, that can be a massive problem. And right now with inflation being at 7%, Americans are struggling to pay their bills and they're struggling to get groceries and put food on the table and even find affordable childcare. In essence, that puts a massive strain on Americans, their families, and their wallets. And that ultimately becomes a big problem because Americans can't afford anything. Ultimately, our economy works because Americans spend a lot of money. But if Americans can't spend a lot of money because they can't afford anything, well, that is going to be a big problem for businesses and for people. So this has been one solution that states have come up with. Raise the minimum wage because inflation is starting to go up. That means workers need to get paid more. And naturally, if you raise the minimum wage, that means any business other than some restaurant staff are going to have to pay all of their workers at least that much. Basically, that means that employees are not actually making any more money. All they're doing is getting more dollars. Those dollars have less value. And ultimately, the buying power is going to be a lot lower too. But I also saw this article on CNBC that basically talks about how employers are actually raising their wages a lot faster than states and the federal government is raising the federal minimum wage. 
federal minimum wage has been pretty stagnant for a long time. It sits at around $7.25 an hour. That was set back in 2009, and as many of us know, $7.25 per hour isn't really going to buy you much, even if you work 40 hours a week. Which is exactly why some employers have started to pay their workers above $7.25 an hour and even into the $15 to $20 an hour range over the last few years. Like take Amazon for example. Amazon has been paying all of its workers a starting wage of around $15 an hour since 2018. And as of September 2021, they will officially start paying their workers around $18 an hour to start. Costco also raised its minimum wage to $17 an hour back in October of 2021. And you also have T-Mobile who is raising its minimum wage to its 75,000 employees to $20 an hour and Bank of America will give all of its employees a minimum of $25 an hour. So we're starting to see some employers raise their wages, but I'd like to say that this is out of the goodness of their heart, but really it's because of our great resignation and our labor shortage issues. Our labor shortage issues are affecting businesses and making them rethink wages and benefits throughout their entire company. Since the summer of 2021, we have seen millions of Americans voluntarily quit their jobs. And Americans are quitting their jobs for a lot of reasons. They're quitting their jobs because of low pay. They're also quitting their jobs because employers are not treating them right and they haven't been treating them right for a very long time and obviously that is not every business and not every company is doing those two things some companies are treating their employees great and some companies are paying their employees well but that's not every company and we're having a massive shift in the workforce that wants to work from home and they want better benefits and they want a job that they are passionate about in fact they don't want a job at all they want a career something that they love and that they can do for the rest of their lives so wages were pretty low and inflation is pretty high meaning prices are very high too and employers are realizing that the only way that they're going to keep people and find new people is if they start paying people more they need to start paying people enough to actually start beating inflation at least temporarily I mean getting a three dollar an hour wage increase is pretty good and it's going to at least equal inflation for a short period of time. Businesses aren't going to be able to do that forever, but in the short term, this could help them find more people and eventually end the great resignation and our labor shortage problem. But if you look at the statistics overall, wages in the United States have not really increased enough to meet inflation. In fact, in December of 2021, real wages for hourly workers on average only went up by around 0.1% and wages overall in 2021 actually decreased by around 2.42%. Even though workers are getting more money, inflation is just getting way too out of hand. So everything that they're getting is not enough. And for the first time in probably the history of the job market, the workers actually have more power when it comes to negotiating salary and negotiating their benefits package. This is because employers are desperate to find people right now. Finding people means that they can produce more goods or more services. And right now they are just unable to do that. And that is contributing to inflation as well. But all of this really begs the question, why haven't we raised the minimum wage or the federal minimum wage from $7.25 an hour already. Do you actually know why we have a minimum wage in the United States in the first place? Well, the minimum wage was first established all the way back in 1938 as part of FDR's New Deal. This essentially created a baseline, a standard of living for all workers in the United States. So that meant that every single worker was going to get paid a certain amount. And then states could either adopt that amount or go even higher depending on what the living situation is in that state. This meant that employers had to give employees a certain amount. If they couldn't afford at least that, then they were going to go out of business. This created stability in the workforce. And remember, this was set during the Great Depression. Now flash forward around 84 years and our minimum wage is set at around $7.25 an hour. Now that's the federal minimum wage. Minimum wages all throughout the country are very different. Like take California, for example. California's minimum wage 
wage is now $15 an hour, while Michigan's minimum wage is only $9.65 an hour. We have seen protests and talks all throughout the country that every state should adopt a minimum wage of around $15 an hour. However, $15 an hour is a really weird benchmark and it might not make sense for every state. For instance, in California, $15 an hour makes a lot of sense. Things are a lot more expensive in California because you have a very high population density. There are millions of people that live in California, and that means millions of people are purchasing things. Everything in California is expensive. Like, I'll give you an example. The average price of a home in Michigan is around $200,000. However, the average home price in California is almost $800,000. So, obviously, things cost more in California, so that means people need to make more money just in order to afford more things. However, if you were to set the minimum wage in Michigan to $15 an hour, well, that would be great for a lot of Michiganders. Michiganders would have a ton of money, at least at first. Things would eventually not cost that much because not everybody has spent their money yet. Once we have a couple years of that, though, and everybody going out and spending money, and you're gonna have a situation where inflation is going to go through the roof. Businesses are gonna have to start supplying Michigan with more. Energy prices are gonna have to go up because now people are traveling more and buying more gas. And ultimately, that could be a big problem for our economy in general. And I'm talking about the entire United States economy here. $15 an hour might not make a difference in every state, but for some states, it's going to be a big deal. And when people are used to making $10 or $11 an hour and you give them a $4 or $5 raise, then they're going to spend that money. Now, a lot of Americans are going to start buying things that they need. Absolutely, this money would be put to good use. However, the majority of Americans are going to spend this money, and they're going to spend this money on just about anything that they want. And that might not even be the case. They might still just be buying things that they really need, but they're just buying more of them because they're able to do so. It's really sad about our economy, but our economy basically works because not everybody has a ton of money. So if people are able to go to the store and buy everything that they need, well, that is absolutely great. Except for now, prices are going to have to go up. Prices ultimately going up is bad. If the minimum wage was $15 an hour, and yeah, for a short time, people could buy all the things they need. Eventually, that would start slipping away and we have to give them more and give them more until the value of our dollar is basically zero. Ultimately, that is how inflation works. Inflation is basically just when your monetary supply is increased. A symptom of inflation is when prices start to go up. In a vacuum, printing money doesn't really mean anything. It's when people start going out and spending that money that problems start to arise. And obviously, that is not a guarantee. A lot of Americans could go out and save this money, and a lot of Americans might start making more than $15 an hour anyway. So there are a lot of different variables here, but ultimately, this could lead to inflation rising throughout our entire country. Think of it this way. If there's only $100 in our economy and you have $1, then you hold 1% of all of the wealth within our economy. However, if the Federal Reserve and the United States government raises the minimum wage, now we need an additional $100 in order to pay all of this extra money. Well, now you don't have 1% anymore. You only have about a half a percent. Everything in price is going to go up and the buying power of every dollar you hold is starting to go down. That's all that would ultimately happen because all of these businesses aren't going to start losing money hand over fist. And that is one of the biggest issues with how our economy works and this minimum wage argument. Basically, if you raise the minimum wage, our economy is going to fundamentally change. And some would argue that that is a very good thing. However, this change would mean that businesses and and companies are going to be stunted by their growth. Basically, when companies make more money, they are able to grow. The reason that they're able to grow is because people are buying more of their stuff. And when they grow, they can employ more workers. This allows them to continue to grow and grow and grow until they've got, you know, 20,000 locations worldwide. 
That is essentially how capitalism works. But if you have to pay everybody more and more and more, and you don't allow these companies to keep a lot of their profits, then that means these companies are going to shrink. And ultimately it means our GDP, our gross domestic product is going to shrink too. And our economy isn't going to grow as fast. And that would be fine, but it doesn't really mean anything. All it really means is that inflation is getting higher and businesses can't really do much about it because they have to pay all of their employees more. Like I said, you'd start to see companies slow down their growth. And now that you know all that, that leads us to the ultimate question. Should we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour in 2022? Well, I'm a little bit conflicted by this because on one hand, raising the minimum wage would mean that millions of workers all throughout the country, at least for the short term, would be able to afford basic goods and services. However, if you don't stop corporations and companies and businesses from taking all of this additional money and just growing, then you're not really going to have much in the first place. However, it's almost impossible for this to create a perfect system because if employees make more, then they're going to go out and buy more. And I'm not just saying they're going to waste their money, but they're going to buy things that they need. This would lead to supply starting to decrease. And if supply starts to decrease, Increase, then businesses ultimately need to make more and all of that comes at a cost if you don't allow the businesses to grow then they can't exactly create more and if they can't create more then everything that we buy is always going to be in short supply which is going to create more inflation and inflation on top of inflation because people are starting to make more money but on the other hand, I don't know if it's such a great idea either for corporations to continue to expand and blow up all throughout the country. I mean, yes, McDonald's has millions of employees. However, if all of those employees aren't making a minimum wage, then what exactly is the point? Instead, McDonald's could be a lot smaller and pay all of their workers more. And that is my ultimate point here. Raising the minimum wage, I'm not really convinced would work in our society, at least not by the standards that we have today. What it's ultimately going to come down to is good companies, good companies that know the value that they're producing and know the value of their workers. Those companies are going to give their employees more naturally, and this is going to happen on a case-by-case -case basis. Good companies paying their workers more because they believe that is the right thing to do. And yes, that might stunt their growth a little bit, but that might be the right thing to do if it means that people can put food on the table. And for the companies, that don't do this, that don't pay their employees well, and don't value the work that they do, those companies should go out of business. No additional stimulus, no bailouts, those companies cannot survive if they're not going to pay their workers well. So like I said, I'm not really sure if the minimum wage should be increased to around $15 an hour in the United States. The federal government is not going to do it. I mean, at this point, it is way too politicized. And just like for other states, there are a ton of states that are never going to raise their minimum wage. What it's ultimately going to come down to is you, the employee, finding a better job and quitting a job that does not pay you well, and employers trying to keep employees and trying to do the right thing to pay their employees well. That way we still have an equilibrium between supply and demand and inflation can remain at a healthy level of around two to 3% as per the Federal Reserve. And I've said this before, you need inflation. An inflation rate of around one to 2% shows that your economy is growing and it shows that there is a need for more money, but you can't have inflation explode and wages continue to be stagnant. That's going to create an uproar in the labor force and it's going to force employers to start raising their wages. But bigger changes to the wages are coming and I assume they're going to be coming over the next few years. Workers are fed up and they're demanding that they're going to be paid more and eventually we will hit that rate of around $15 an hour. Probably not at the federal level, but each state will adopt this $15 an hour mark but it's going to take a long time. And obviously this is all just my opinion, but now I wanna hear what you have to say about this issue. What do you think about the minimum wage problem in the United States? Should employers actually start paying their employees better or should states force them to by raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour?
plus. Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds and I'll see you all in the next one.